Hey, hey, this is Mark. Welcome to Go AZ Motorcycles, and I think this is our fourth episode of Louie's Garage. Let's go and see what Louie's got in store for us today. Mr. Louie. Hey, Mark. How are you? Good. Welcome. It's the same handshake over and over again. You ready? I'm good. Oh, that's good. Wow. Matt, blow it up. To your mom. <laughs> wow. All right, let's go. So usually it's like we're going to go over the Alps today. We are going to walk through the Ducati area though. That's correct. And uh, we do have some nice bikes up on the stand right now. This is our Ducati day. Nice. Beautiful. We just put a custom seat on this one. Oh, okay. It's an orthotic gel seat that I have custom made here. Very wow. comfortable. Uh, gets you at least 500 miles. Wow. Yeah. Before needing a break. Well, those are nice. So we do custom seats too, that's cool. Absolutely. Come on in. So we're heading over to the Beamer Bay. BMW side. I've got a new 2010 R1200 GS. Oh, okay. Side. So this is the new dual overhead camera. Yeah. Wow. I wanted to give you guys kind of an insight. I know last time we talked about how to check the oil level and some right. other things. I wanted to actually show you what they changed internally as far as the valve train is. Yeah, right off the top, it went from four volts to two volts. Yep. So that's a little simpler. Yep, the filler, uh, oil filler is now on the right hand, the right -hand side, side versus yeah. left hand side. Reason being is because there's a ventilation system now on the left hand side that goes back into the air box uh, and that would impede with uh, pouring oil down. Ah, okay. That's been redesigned. All right, so it looks like you kind of got her prepped yeah, up here. Yeah, did some of the work for you. Uh, you know, the moving the injector, the uh, ignition coil, rather. Okay. And then it'll the wiggle that comes out. Uh, and then I've loosened these, obviously. These are T40 uh, Torx bolts. Okay. Yeah, I know there's a big, there's a, a lot of buzz out there that, uh, you know, the new motor is, uh, you can't work on it. What, guess first question, what is the valve adjustment interval for this? to the old one. Well, it's still the same. They recommend that you inspect them every 6,000 miles. However, I have a feeling with this particular setup, the new valve train, and the material that they're using for the valve seats, they probably won't need to be adjusted nearly as frequently. Okay. So still still inspect them at 6,000 miles. However, you're not going to probably actually adjust them until and much that, further down the road. And the price for inspection isn't as uh, much as you would need for the Correct. Job. Yep. So you're still going to spend a little money to check. But, right. Uh, adjustment only as needed. Right. Okay. It's, great. And this this engine is going to be uh, much easier to maintain, uh, and the intervals uh, as far as expense goes and time concerns. Now I've uh, I've ridden the new uh, the new 2010 motor mm -hmm. uh, on an RT, and I will tell you that it is a much smoother engine. And I don't know if it's because of the valve arrangement mm -hmm. or what, but the bike really does seem to run a lot smoother. A lot of that has to do with um, the, the configuration of the valve train. You're correct. There's a lot less moving mass in here now. You don't have those big rocker arms uh, and then the little push rods that they used to have. It's all done with the cam and then lobing. Yeah, and that would that could explain it then. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's really a lot smoother yep. motor, and uh, I was able to pull uh, fifth gear with no problem at all at about 30 miles an hour. So it's pretty pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, you'll get more torque, more horsepower. Uh, so can we zoom in here and just kind of do a little look in, uh, around through the whole motor here, yeah, and then we're going to do some more talking about it. Absolutely. Uh, you've got these are your your cam lobes. Uh, it's all chain driven. There's uh, tensioners built into the head itself, um, and now they've got these little followers. Uh, people call them rocker arms still, uh, or a cam follower. Uh, and then these there's a shim in here. I don't know if you can see that on the side. It's a hemispherical shim, much similar to like the uh, F800 or the K12, K1300. And this head actually came off the HT, HP2 Sport, right? That's correct, yep. This was uh, developed from that or this derived from that. Yep, it's a variation on that, um, you know, obviously because you can reach higher RPMs, uh, greater power band. Yeah, and the RPM has gone up, what, 500, I think? Yep. So, so that's a great uh, great addition, and yep. I think it's, uh, it's a worthwhile uh, advancement to the motor. And obviously, there's such a, a huge following on the boxer engine. And, uh, you know, I think this is going to make a, a big difference long term. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. As far as adjusting, you know, you put the engine at top dead center on the, the uh, cylinder that you're checking with your feeler gauge in between the cam lobe itself and the follower. Um, if that's off, simply pop the clip out, pull the uh, rocker arm out, and then you can adjust, you know, by measuring the shim size. Oh, okay, okay. so time wise, it's not, it's not nearly yeah. as difficult as everybody made it up. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, come on in here, Cole, and uh, just zoom in here and watch you point to that. So basically, you remove this clip. Yep. And then there's the, uh, you measure down in here, and then there's shims. Yeah, there's a shim on the inside of the, uh, of the following here. Right underneath this. Yep. Okay, so basically your shim goes right down in between yep. here. Okay. 
Very interesting. Yeah. Well, hey, man, this is uh, this is great information. We really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to Go Easy Motorcycles and Louis Garage. Thanks, Louis. Thanks, Mark. Take care. Always a pleasure.